Hey, hey, this is a short episode. In this short episode, we're going to be talking again to Mike Molinari, but specifically about a common confusion surrounding MCA versus breaker and where a lot of people will think, oh, hey, maybe this particular device won't work because of the amperage rating. And we want to clarify some of that. Maybe we clarify, maybe we don't because it gets a little nerdy, but it's a short episode about this common question that we get. But first, we want to hear from our great sponsors. Refrigeration Technologies at Refrigetech.com. Carrier and Carrier.com. Don't miss the absolutely essential event in ACHR, the AHR Expo 2025, coming to Orlando, February 10th through 12th. Explore the latest product advancements, best practices, and industry trends. And I'll be there, of course. Register now for free at AHRExpo.com. NAVAC at NAVACGlobal.com. The ESCO Institute, with over 200 HVACR training solutions, courses, webinars, and simulators. Find out more by going to escogroup.org. So I have Mike on again to talk about this. So give me the reasons why, even if I've got a five ton condenser, I'm okay to go ahead and put the Cool Guard 2 on it. Oh, this is a common question that we get. So, yes, the Cool Guard 2 is rated for 40 amps continuously. That is not to be confused with the breaker size of the system. So when you size an HVAC system for compatibility with the Cool Guard, you need to look at MCA, which is your minimum circuit impacity. As long as the MCA rating of the system is 40 amps or lower, you can absolutely use that unit. Don't confuse it with MOP, which is maximum overcurrent protection, which is your circuit breaker size. So you may in fact have six gauge wire, but a system with an MCA of 27 amps, that's absolutely fine to use. The KG2 accepts wire up to six gauge, but you can use it on any systems with an MCA up to 40 amps. I'm just going to riff here for a second. If you look up, I'm going to encourage everybody to pause this if you can. And don't do this while you're driving. That'd be a bad idea. But look up, go to ditechsurgeprotection.com and pull up the DTK dash KG2 cool guard. Pull up the installation instructions for it because I want you to look at some things here because it's pretty cool. They've got all the information here, but it says that right here. The mechanical lugs are rated for a wire size range of 14 to 6 AWG, American wire gauge, stranded copper rated torque, 25 inch pounds. Look at there. It even gives you that. There's something to be said for RTFM reading the fantastic manual, as we always say. But here's the thing that I want to remind everybody of, and this is just across the board. This particular device is not a circuit breaker. It is not a fuse. It is not there for the purpose of disconnecting in the case of an overcurrent situation. And so it's rated just like anything else that is current carrying your conductors, your contactor, your anything else that's in the circuit, right? It's rated for carrying current. And when you're rating something for carrying current, you do that based on MCA. So minimum circuit ampacity. That's what we're talking about. So when you look at that data tag, look for that MCA. That tells you how to size your wire. And it also tells you, because you're going to be under 40 for any residential condensing unit that you deal with. Okay, by the way, you know you're good in that case. Now, that is not the same as your maximum overcurrent protector. So you'll notice MCA is minimum circuit ampacity. MOCP is maximum over current protector. That could also be max fuse. It could say max circuit breaker. It all means the same thing. That's telling you what the maximum size you can put in is to deal with those starting amps. That's why you have that. If you were dealing with a strictly resistive load, like something like a heater or whatever, you wouldn't have that. They would be the same. But because with a motor or anything that has that inductive field that takes a second to get started, you're going to have higher current. And that's why you allow for that larger breaker. Those electricians out there or those old timers who say, gosh, darn it, the circuit breaker protects the conductor. You cannot oversize a circuit breaker. I understand that if you're just reading the NEC and you're not looking specifically at the part of the NEC that relates to these types of devices, specifically air conditioning. So it's section 440 is the section we're talking about here it specifically addresses this Mike Holtz covered it. Many others have covered this. It is an exception, and it's specifically related to motors that have internal overload protection. So when your motor has internal overload protection, like our compressors do and our condenser fans and all that, that's what allows for this difference between your MCA and your MOCP. It allows your circuit breaker to be bigger. But the point is, I'll let you bring it home here. The real point is that it works just fine for the condensers that we work on, right? I mean, that's it. 
Yes, you'd be hard pressed at this day and age to find a five ton residential system that had an MCA higher than 40. Not to say they're not out there, but the higher SEER, the more efficient systems, we're drawing less current now. We're not drawing more current. So it's far and few between that you'd even find that. So the KG2 is going to be able to cover all your residential five ton and under applications. And to your point there, you actually often will see higher MOCP or higher max breaker on systems that are inverter driven. And it's just the way that it's calculated. It's weird. You wouldn't think they do that, but that is something that you will find from time to time. I can't explain exactly why that is. That's part of however they do the testing. But again, just remember, those are two different things. You're looking for MCA. It would be a case where like you wouldn't want to put one of these on, say, an air handler that had a very large heat strip in it or something like that, where that MCA was higher. And so there are applications where you need to pay attention to it. But for your typical condenser, just look for that MCA. As long as it's under 40, you're good to go. That's right. Thanks for coming on and doing this quick Q&A episode, Mike. Appreciate it, Brian. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast.